It is Monday, January the 9th, 2023. I am James. You are you. We are here for a breathtaking edition of the At Home Show every Monday right here, 9 p.m.-ish Eastern Standard Time on Twitch.tv slash, of course, At Home with James. The second episode of the brand new year, and we began the year with shocking and exhilarating news. What was that news if you were not here last week? Last week, we announced that we would be celebrating the three-year anniversary of this program by putting on a full-blown live show. Now, if there's any questions, curiosities, or confusion, of course, this show happens live every Monday, as mentioned. But when we're talking live, when we're saying live, when we're promoting live, we mean live in a venue in front of people, ticket holders, fans, audience members for the first time, maybe only time, and perhaps last time. When is it happening? It's happening in the month of March to truly celebrate and commemorate three years of this itsy bitsy program that in its humble beginnings started on Instagram Live back when everyone was bored out of their minds thinking, I'm going to put on a little comedy show. Well, there was a grandfather to that idea, and it was me. COVID began Thursday, March, what was it, 13th? I don't know, but I can tell you this, that I was on the air the following Monday, and we're doing it live, as Bill O'Reilly, legendary scumball, once said, F it. We'll do it live. It happens this March. Now, that show, just like this show, cannot happen without a plethora and or plethora of people, one of which is working in our control center tonight. And no, I'm not talking about our production assistant, Devin, who announced to the chat that he fell into a snowbank tonight. We're talking about the one and the only Dimitri Kiras. You know what? I want Dimitri on the air right now. Dimitri, I want you to bring yourself on. Dimitri. Do it live! Exactly. Legendary scumball, Bill O'Reilly. Dimitri, you're working hard right now on the live show. Here I am. I booked out a laboratory and we're putting together a pen to paper. Do it the old-fashioned way. Pen to paper. A magic eraser marker to a whiteboard. Real science. These are all uh, struggling comedians behind me in yeah. lab coats, putting the work in, trying to figure out how do we do a live version of the show. Well, this is what I like about you, Dimitri, because for people who don't know, and why would they know? Why would they? You, Dave, and myself just got done a production meeting where yeah. we started to put the puzzle together of what does a live at home look like, and you've immediately left, gone into the lab, yeah. as well as the control center for tonight's show. This is why tonight... Right off the top, I'm giving you a raise. Come on. Two, two coffees. Do it live! Are you kidding me? Exactly. You can't afford that. You're already put. I can and I will. This is what I love about this show and what and your mm-hmm. current state of be- being. You're willing to yeah. put it all on the line. I'm fired up. I am putting it all on the line. You I'm are rolling fired the up. dice. You're a nasty I'm gonna blow piece into of business. The dice. I am a nasty piece of business. Because we only get one shot at this, Dimitri. There's only one time that you can have your first live show. You know what it feels like? It feels like we're down in the third. Yeah. Goalies pulled. I like that this show is down in the third. We're not even winning. Well, we're I, in the I midst ran, of losing. I ran through the analytics last time I was here. Was I, know. I not? I know. They you were. were good. We were, we were down. We were yep. down a lot. Yep. We were only up 6.9%, but we mm-hmm. were in the brown. Yep. <clears throat> so I'm in the lab right now. This used to be a COVID clinic. Well, that's not a problem anymore. We fixed that, so yep. Now we're doing comedy in here, which is great because yep. all these scientists slash comedians need a place to work. So not mm-hmm. only are you putting in the work to try to make a live show happen, but you're also employing uh, struggling scientists. Well, I'm employing you, and that's why I know you're working hard tonight. I want to put some more stuff on your plate. I'm having a really hard time whittling down what this at home live is going to be. I need you to generate some ideas for later on in the night. I need you to get me excited by it. getting the audience excited. I need a bunch of brand new ideas, segments, anything and everything. I need it by the end of the night. Bits, gags, characters, synthesized yeah. in the lab. Yes. I'm talking yes. about taking blue liquid and putting it into green liquid and see what kind of liquid comes out of that. It's everything yes. is happening. Anything and everything is happening in the sake of comedy and 
taking an online show and making it live, which has never been done before, as far as I understand. It's, it is never, it's never been done. As far as I know, nobody's even thought about reverse engineering the future of comedy, which is online, and then taking it back to its roots, which is live. Yeah, nobody's we're, ever done we're this pulling before. it back. But that's what makes us us. So it makes this show unique. That's what makes you and a, a nasty and a very very mild fan favorite to an online audience. I'm very excited. Not only am I going to have ideas for you later in the show, James, I'm going to have something that's going to blow your goddamn dick off. Oh, I apologize. Did I swear? Yeah. Well, you did. That's okay. Do it live. That's the thing about live. We need to get ready for that. I might say something crazy on stage. You might even say something crazy on stage too. There's no bleep button on that. Here's Anything the thing. Goes. Here's the thing though. Yep. We, we can't get scrubbed live. No, we can't. We can't get kicked off of Twitch live. No, they can't control us when we're in the the real world. It's Episodes like, of the show cannot get banned in a series of countries yeah. like some of our VODs on YouTube currently are. That's right. We're outlawed in which country? Uh, there's a number of countries. It's pretty cool accolade. Listen, yes, they can't yeah. touch us in the real world. It's like the Matrix. When we get jacked off, nobody can touch us. All right, well, thanks for that. Why don't you keep that idea for uh, the late show? You got it, baby. Hey, James, I can feel it. This is going to be big, huh? So can I. Do it live! All right, buddy, I love you. I'll see you in a bit. Thanks, Dimitri. We'll talk soon. That's Dimitri Kirez. Look, the live show's coming up, but there's still so much time. We still need to dedicate the correct and appropriate amount of care to the internet show. Where it all began and where it all begins again, we are going to welcome our first guest some time ago. This person conceived of a brand new music festival called Friday Fest. And I began to punch up his ideas. I said, what if we take Friday Fest, we keep the name, but we do it on a Monday, just like this show happens to be on. I have tasked this man to come up with a brand new series of ideas, not unlike the At Home Live, but for fr we might even do Friday Fest at At Home Live. That's how open this is. But first, we need to get the ideas. Let's welcome Charles Montgomery. Charles, you have the riches. The sweet sounds of multi-platinum recording artist Flo Rida bringing you on screen. Uh, Charles, you have the most rich guy sounding name I've That's ever That's true, yeah. Yeah. Um, how does that make you feel? Like, or do you want me to dumb it down a little? Should we go with a Chuck? Which is yeah, that's one thing I want for us to do. I want to punch down your name. I want we got we got to make your name a little bit less rich sounding. Okay. Uh, Charlie Gomer. I think we're going a little too far with that one. Maybe we I, haven't gone far enough. Because the thing is, I got to keep enough prestige on the name that we can get Friday Fest going and get some like reputable. You know what? That's true. No one's going to listen to any ideas if it comes from a guy named Charlie Gomer. I'm Charlie Gomer. You want to come do my festival? Yeah, it sounds like it could be like a yeah a uh, like a like a really like deep state Republican Charlie Look at that Gomer. Banjo. Yeah, Charlie Gomer, the only Republican to want to vote against the use of toilets. <laughs> Charles. Yes, sir. We're here to talk about Friday Fest, mm -hmm. the first ever festival that happens on a Monday but does yeah. not feature the name of its day. I want to know, when I tasked you with this, again, task, how'd you feel? Well, um, you know, I've been working steadily on Friday Fest since the last one. So I love that. Of things were already in place. Um, I think uh, things have evolved a little bit, mm -hmm. I'd like to say, since the last time. Um and, you know, I, at first I was a little, I didn't know what to do with, with having Friday Fest on a Monday. Yeah. Um, you know, for obvious reasons. But It's unusual. It is unusual. Um, but I'd like to think this is a festival that kind of bucks the trends. I like uh, that. When it comes to festivals. And yep. what bucks more of a trend than having a Friday festival on a Monday? Yep. I, I think it's very typical for... It's a very festivals. undesirable name for a one-day-only festival. And what people would think would be an undesirable day to have a festival on. like who Exactly, on right? So they go hand in hand. They do, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think uh, we kind of spitballed some things last time. About yeah, we sure did. Would work. And uh, I think you had uh, a couple of moments of thinking some of these ideas had been done before. So I've mm -hmm. gone back. Now, to I'm going to put this way. out there. I don't mm -hmm. remember any of the ideas. Right. So the main uh, thing about Friday Fest was instead of... Uh, Basically, we were going to get a whole bunch of venues 
and have all these bands playing at the same time at different venues. Mm -hmm. uh, people could just go back. Yeah, yeah. It was scattered around the city. Yeah. yeah. And you said it sounded a little pop Montreal. Yeah, it sounded a little pop Montrealish. Well, I was um, kind of determined to go through with it. And uh, but as luck would have it, um, every venue I approached was a hard no. OK, uh, so that whole thing is gone. We're going back to a, a more traditional kind of like all in one spot situation. Oh, OK. So it's being held in the same venue, kind of like a battle of the band, yeah. so to speak. Uh, and as luck would have it, you know, I made a lot of calls and I think I have secured uh, part of the parking lot behind the orange julep. Uh, now, some might not like this. I love it. I think the idea of doing a festival in the parking lot, or rather a portion of the parking lot at the mm. Orange Julep, mm. Montreal landmark, is a great... I hope it doesn't clash with classic car night. Well, that's actually the thing. Uh, on that particular Monday, there's a meetup of the Chrysler Minivan Enthusiast Club. Okay. We're going to have to uh, split mm. the parking lot with that. Yep. But I think there might be some crossover in audience. Mm -hmm. All but right. Uh, okay. I'm kind of curious. You said uh, not everyone might be on board for that. Uh, well, it's not in a really desirable part of town, right? We're kind of in uh, Cote de Neige ish. Yeah. Right. But doesn't the uh, doesn't the julep itself make it desirable? I think it does. You know, if we can partner up with the orange julep, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think we can get some hot dogs flowing. Well, I'd like. I mean, I'm more into the drink than the actual food there, but you know, it's not my festival. Are, are you, you're a julep fan? I love the orange julep. It is delicious. What are, what's in that thing? It's milk and OJ. Is that about it? I've heard there's eggs in it too. All right. Maybe I didn't need to know that. Well, you asked. It is a pricey drink these days. Though. It's a pricey drink, but it, you know, I never feel ripped off when I consume it. Oh, okay. I never thought about it that way. All right. Uh, yeah. So uh, you want to move You seem on nervous to tonight, Charles. Sorry? You seem nervous tonight. Oh, I'm always a little jumpy. It's you're you're a little nervous. Yeah, I know. I put you on the spot tonight. I want you to pitch Friday Fest. You're nervous. It's been a while since I've done a pitch like this. And, uh, you know. It's been a while. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I think after, you know, all the kick in the teeth I took from all those venues I approached, I'm just yeah. a little, like, a little sensitive about how things okay. are going Look, Friday Fest. Okay, you know, I, I don't want to say it's a judgment-free zone. We might have to punch up the ideas. I want to know what's going on at Friday Fest. You've okay. wet my appetite. I want you to satiate me. Okay. Well, the second thing, before we get to the actual music, the second big thing about when it's going to take place is, yeah. um, I don't know how often you go to these uh, music festivals. Uh, Never. They're always in the sun, uh, the summer. You're in the yeah, sun. Yeah, that's true. There's no shade. I'm thinking we hold Friday Fest mid-January. You know, it's a bold move. I thought you were going to say something like October, right? Because you're not incorrect. Heavy Montreal. Oceaga, Bucking the band's the trends, Warped friend. Tour. They're all in the summer season, right? Sometimes you got to take things right to the extreme to know where the comfort zone is. Okay, so this is a bit of a winter festival. Sure. I, uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Shovels, okay. Bring your crazy carpets. Yep. It's pretty flat over the Okay. Over, Sounds over like a street. family friendly event. No, very much not so. You just said bring your magic carpets. Well, you can the magic carpet as an adult. Fair enough. Okay. No, no, I like that you're pushing some... back on me tonight, Charles. Maybe There'll that's what you're unsavory nervous. acts. Hey, do I scare you a little bit, Charles? A little bit. Thought so. It's you know, the thing is, like, I know you're gonna be at the first Friday festival, and I know you're gonna be walking around the site, arms crossed, just kind of looking over everything, <laughs> testing all the screws. I the am often tanks. uh I am often sporting crossed arms. <laughs> yes, I don't right. I don't present a welcoming uh language of body, I don't think. Mm -hmm. And since you're here kind of on the ground floor, like you're here helping me come up with the things like I want it to be just right the first okay. time for you. I want right. those arms to come uncrossed. Yeah. And just be like open to the environment. Okay. All right. You're 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 building this thing up. We still don't know anything about the festival. We know that it's in a parking lot that's shared with the Orange Julep. Right. We know it's in January. So uh, once again, it's a music I want festival. you to satisfy me. Okay. I don't know what that means, but I see. I think you um, do. <laughs> uh it is a music festival if i hadn't said nice. that yeah um so once again you know right after i got all the no's from those various venues um i started contacting some agents because you got to start uh yeah looking at the bands too you need star power for these things and uh once again it was a universal no across the board from mm -hmm. every music agent i spoke to um so i had to do a little uh 
thinking and I had to do a little uh, scheming to come up with a way to get bands in on this, get them interested. Mm -hmm. And what I did is uh, I went on the dark web and uh, I found a fellow there. Um, I think his name was the Night Hawk or the Night Weirdo, something like that, who was in possession of all the email addresses of every band and artist on Spotify. Wait, hold on. Night Hawk hmm. or the Night Weirdo? I don't know. It's all anonymous. You know, this is just someone I came across who was touting the fact he has. Sounds familiar. It. Does he? We won't get into it. It's not you, is it? I am not the Nighthawk or the Night Weirdo. Okay. All right. So I got I, I was Baba in Boy. Of all these email addresses for every single artist on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Spam them all, and we're starting to get some interest. We're starting. To okay. So who are some of the artists? Okay. I'm you know how to drag an announcement out. So, you know, keep in mind, uh, Spotify is very, you know, there's a lot oh, is this, of- Is this a filibuster? I guess so, yeah. It's a filibuster. You, I think four or five times you're like, I talked to a lot of venues. I talked to a lot of venues. I talked to a lot of bands. I'm just trying to get you to, you know- you know uh, how to build you have to walk before you can run you know yeah um, yeah i know i don't bands, even think we're you know, i don't even think we're walking right now we're sliding across the floor in our diapers you know what's happening is basically it's not an all-star roster yet uh let me okay wanna, that's fine that's fine bands? right all right so so far we've had some interest in a uh a nebraska ska band called the cob tones okay uh there's some emo group out of Bruges called Sad, Sad, Sad. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with them. No. Uh, there's a Monkees cover band called Monkey See, Monkey Play. That's, you know, I'm interested in the Monkees cover band. All right. Well, there is. As long as they play, uh, could they, could they, could their entire set just be uh, 30 minutes of playing Last Train to Clarksville? Well, that's all they actually have on Spotify right now. I like that. Like, okay. Oh, you turn me around. Let's continue. Right. Get this Monkees um, tribute band. Yeah, we've got Ariana Grande. She's interested, obviously. Um, there's a little outro, outlaw country guy from Parts Unknown. Oh, I like the idea of an outlaw country guy. Yeah, we got it all going on. He's yeah. Called Cow, he's called Cowpoke Skittle. I like if his name was just outlaw country guy. From Parts Unknown. Yeah, I do like that. Okay. Uh, we yeah, now, hold on. You said Ariana Grande? Yeah. The I mean, uh, creator of the uh, most uh, salacious Christmas song of all time? Oh, do you like it? Not really. It's very salacious. Santa, tell me. <laughs> the entire very, music video is her and all of her little friends in their undies. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, like does, you haven't seen it. He does see everything, I guess. You know. uh, yeah, I, I'm not familiar with that one. Am I making you nervous tonight, Charles? I, I'm just, uh, I drink coffee all day. This is my okay. natural state. Don't all right, worry okay, about. all right. Um, who else we got? We had a Christian punk band from Utah. They're called Punk is Fudge. Okay. And the Rolling Stones. Got the Rolling Stones, like the actual Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. Uh, whoever's still around, they are very interested. Well, there's a, a lot of them are still around. Their drummer died last year. Rest in peace, Charlie Watts. Yeah, RIP. So this is quite a lineup. <laughs> it is an eclectic how are you gonna? Yeah. How are you going to afford all these bands, Charles? Okay, so this is one of the challenges we have to overcome. Um, I think last time I was doing a lot of bragging about uh, unlimited financing. Yeah. Uh, at the time, I had a very uh, kind of suspicious uh, financier in the works. Uh, unfortunately, he has uh, disappeared off the map. That's something a rich would happen to a rich guy, having yeah, a financier. Was, uh... Even saying the word financier is... Charles, do you have uh... you come from money? Be honest. You can tell us if you're rich. Uh, you, we, I, I'm starting to get the impression you're giving off a uh, I'm rich, but I don't wear it energy. We, I grew up in a, being driven around in a Chrysler minivan. All right. Was it new? It was new, and then eventually it was old. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. What part of town you grew up in? Uh, Westmount. <laughs> I think uh, two cha-chings on that. Yeah. Yeah. Upper or lower? In the middle, actually. All right. Three cha-chings mean that, Charles, it's confirmed. You're rich. Does this change everything? Is this like... Yeah, all right. Well, needless to say, 
I am not a man of infinite means, as I was kind mm-hmm. of letting on the first time. Sure. My financier has backed out. Uh, yeah. Or to be more specific, he uh, he was on his yacht and they drifted into the Bermuda Triangle. Never Got it. Okay. Again. So, uh, but as luck would have it, I was at the uh, Casino de Mont Tremblant a couple of weeks ago. Okay. I want to. You know, cool you know who visits Mont Tremblant, right? Who? Rich people. Do they? I mean, if it's normal for you. <laughs> That's a classic rich guy laugh. <laughs> uh, and, All right, and, let's keep it going, Mr. Burns. Uh, excellent. I want a cool uh, 90 bucks on the uh, one arm bandits, okay. which is, you know, chump change for me, obviously. Yeah. But, um, what I'm thinking is that um, maybe I can propose, I know they're probably out there watching tonight, all the people who have won big at the Moltron Law Casino can yeah. come in as like co-financiers. Okay. And they can all be interesting. this. Uh, and uh, I, I, I will give out my email address at the end of the show and they can start getting in touch. Okay. We'll arrange some debit transfers. We'll get the money flowing. But I think, um, I think we're going to pull it off. Now, is there anything else that goes on? Is there food at this thing? You know, a lot of festivals. There's a lot of fun stuff, right? Uh, many, many moons ago when I performed at the Vans Warp Tour, uh, mm-hmm. they gave us, a, there was like a monster energy drink station. And I wanted I wanted uh, energy drinks at Friday Fest. What do you have? Well, uh, there's going to be, uh, I think we mentioned this last time, there's going to be grilled cheese and slush puppies in Spain. Yeah, okay. Like, just across the board. Yeah, I guess grilled cheese is a pretty wintry food. Uh, yeah, definitely. Keep it warm. You know what you should do? You know, you know what goes great with grilled cheese, right? Uh, what? We get tomato soup, obviously. Why don't you do Ooh. tomato soup slush? I like it, man. Yeah, it comes hot and cold. Nice hot bowl of tomato soup with ice chips in it. Now tell me, can you spike tomato soup with something to? Uh, you well, know, you tell me. Laughing? We all know that the uh, the people of wealth and taste are often drinking a Grand Marnier or some type of Chardonnay or cognac. Put some you ever, in you look like the type of guy that would uh, put booze in soup. I, I would definitely put booze. I'm sneak uh, sneak a me. sneak a flask into a restaurant. Pour some gin inside of a, a nice bisque. Absolutely. That all sounds like, isn't it, is it not surprising? That's not more of a common thing. How much are the tickets to Friday Fest? Um, it depends on uh, how much the Rolling Stones ask for. I think we can get everyone in for like a tenner. Ten bucks? I think so. This festival's a mess. Can I, can I tell you though, like the, one of the things that, well, one of the main things I haven't told you yet, which is yeah. the, like, the coup de gras on this. We're not going to have a headliner. Maybe coup de gras is not the right word, but the pinnacle. We're not going to have a headliner. We're going to do something completely different. A mm-hmm. little off the wall. Throughout the day, okay. everyone in attendance gets to vote on who their favorite like guitarist is and bass player and drummer and house DJ. And at the end of the day, the headlining set will be a super group of the all-star voting from the day. That's pretty we'll interesting. I'm going to uh, tell you. You had me. At the orange this is julep. Where I lose you. This is you had where me I at the orange julep and you really lost me hard, but I like this idea of voting a super okay. group on stage. And they just gotta do something. Yeah. They have to please us. So it could be one or maybe no members of any of the Rolling Stones. That's right. I mean, if Keith is having an off day, then uh, nuts to Yeah. Me. All right. You're 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 ending strong here, Charles. I am <laughs> impressed by that. Thank you. Uh yeah, I, I think that kind of covers it from oh. okay. Wait, this just in. Um, this Sharon just Lewis, in? Would someone throw a newspaper through your window? No, this just came into my email. Your Sharon, Lois, and Bram are in. Isn't one of them dead? Uh, they've got a new one. Like one of them oh, okay, so there's a new Sharon, Lois, or Bram. Yeah, apparently they got All right, you're ending strong here. I like this. You got less nervous along the way, which goes a long way with me. I, I No, I'm, I'm always jittery. It's uh, Okay, it's because you're having constant. too much coffee. Yes. Well, you know... There's a lot of anxiety that comes with uh, lots of riches. <laughs> mo money, mo anxiety. <laughs> there we go. Well, Charles, look, I uh, I think you're on to something here. We'll keep yeah. talking about Friday Fest, and we'll I see if we, we can be. integrate it into the at-home live that's happening in a couple months. I, I will. And uh, uh, Now, Charles, any... look, I, I want to I switch gears here for a second. Sure. You're going to be performing later tonight. I'm going to be doing uh, the Hurley's 1030 show. Uh, your buddy yeah. uh, Walter might be there. Yeah, Walter Ling, friend of the yeah. show. Some uh, of the best hair in Montreal, most certainly. From top to bottom, he is. Uh, he's got it. Yeah. 
you're going to be doing some stand up at Hurley's tonight at 10 30. So if there's anyone in the downtown core or surrounding area, mm-hmm. they thought, you know what? That Friday fest guy was interesting. Maybe I can go see him at Hurley's and he can uh, lend me a couple bucks. I, I just might. And I've got like a tight five on the orange julep. If that's your thing. You know? That is my thing. Yeah. You can talk okay. about it. Uh, hey, uh, did you hear they put eggs in it? What <laughs> next? Flour. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hold on to that one. I, I'll, I'll you can have that one for free yeah all right charles thanks so much for being here and i wish you nothing but the best with friday fest thank you very much and uh i'll, I'll send that money in the mail i love that i love getting money in the mail that's charles montgomery here comes the money here we go money talk here comes the money the richest guest in at-home history this guy is trying to say he's not rich I said, where'd you grow up? He gave us the richest neighborhood in Montreal. There's no way this guy grew up in between Upper and Lower Westmount. This guy probably went to LCC growing up. This guy probably went to, yeah, he's nodding. He did go to LCC. There it is. There it is. He's probably like dating all the girls at the Trafalgar School for Girls, correct or incorrect? Wow, he said no and shame. Got no dates from the, he got no, uh, none of the ladies of Traff. Let's welcome our next guest on the subject of music. We have a musician joining us. You might remember this person. She's saying, have yourself a merry little Christmas back in our wonderful holiday programming in the month of December. Let's welcome back Marlena Moore to the show. Hello. Now, uh, Marlena, there's, uh, the uh, sunglasses were timed perfectly. Uh, do you like a Credence Clearwater revival? Um, sure. I mean, I I have to say, like, a, a lot of these, uh, you know, we can call them, like, you know, dad rock, classic rock. I, I strongly associate it with, uh, actually, uh, early pandemic days of me and my boyfriend just getting in his parents' car and driving around and nice. listening to the radio station and yeah. just like we're a couple of kids in the, the 60s or something like that except yeah. we have except we have phones and we can look up the exact personnel of each track oh, yeah. as we please you know there uh there is something to be said about certain songs are perfect for in the car yes absolutely now i'm going to tell you about some of my early pandemic as it relates to music i was convinced i was going to put together a series of spotify playlists um compilation so to speak similar to what we would see as youths the now albums or the much music big shiny tunes a series of playlists related to songs you could wash your car to in the driveway and i still think there's there is a, there is something to that idea is there some uh is there some sexy stuff on there sexy stuff songs yeah, from wash your, come on. Wa- washing your car you no, know Marlene, it's not a, it's not like a sexy <laughs> car wash this is like i was thinking like a lot of bad company but wait, i guess wait so you're just a guy listening to bad company washing your car like, yeah, so? look, one i remember t- telling my friend this and he goes you don't you don't have a car you don't drive and you don't have a driveway it's like doesn't mean you can't get into the idea of washing a car to feel like making love yeah and you know if you got a if you got a sexy broad in your life you'd be like hey baby take a listen to this go wash my car well uh guys here's the deal uh there you have it if you're a sexy broad i want to wash a car with you to bad company feel like making love now marlena i want to get into it you were just listening to charles montgomery resident rich guy on the show uh you were not invited to play friday fest in the parking lot of the orange julep what did you think of that festival and do you have any desire of uh having a gig there I think it sounded fantastic. I would play absolutely. And now that we're aware that Charles has lots of money, I'm really, really, really excited about that endeavor. I think that winter festivals can totally be a thing. Oh, also, for sure. I I strongly, strongly agree with alcohol in soups. Like, yeah. I think that I think that is good and should be normal as well. Like, you know how there was like the broth trend for a while where you like, you know, sip a broth, just shot a gin in that, like 
great. Like well, we what, have, how about this? Yeah. You know, uh, Marlena, do you, I assume you drink, you're, you're speaking uh, highly of the idea of putting booze inside soup. So I wanted to ask you, what if I give you a couple soups and you let me know what the ideal booze is for them? Oh yeah, please. Yes. Tell well, me. Let's start with a beef and barley. What booze do you put in a beef and barley? Oh, bourbon, obviously. Okay. Well, yeah. how about like a, like a kind of a creamy potato and leek? Creamy potato and leek. Again, my mind's going to like a, a clearer, um, uh, <laughs> a, 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 what's it called? Alcohol? Sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Otherwise known as booze. <laughs> yes, there we go. Uh, yeah, like vodka or gin or something like that. Um, you could be a absolutely like disgusting little freak and make do some sort of like weird, like, you know, flavored liqueur or something like that. Okay. Now, now yeah. what about uh, a classic chicken noodle? Uh, classic chicken noodle. You know what? Spice it up with a little bit of tequila. I, I know. Like, I wondered if you know, I, that was the one yeah. thing that came to my brain. Now, what about this one? A French onion soup that's covered in cheese, <laughs> covered in cheese. Oh, baby. Uh, French onion sh soup. Well, you know what? Let's just go. Let's do a power clash. Let's just drown that baby in Alizé. Let's just, okay. go, let's just now, go nuts. Now, what about a pho? What about a pho? Uh, pho, I think, um, oh, like some sort of, uh, oh, gosh. Now, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you're going to say a Labatt 50. Oh Full yeah, pain. sure. I'm not a beer drinker, but like that could be good, you know. Kind okay. of the bubbles and the and the thaw could be could be nice together. Sure. sure. Now, what's interesting is that we have found this new segment, which we'll <laughs> pivot away from because, as I mentioned, you are a performer. We're here tonight to talk about the bar band songs that yeah. are either overplayed, overrated, or need to go away. I'm curious to know, Marlena. Do you do a lot of bar gigs? Because I don't get the sense that you do. Like, do I play in bars? Well, I, I want to qualify this. The difference sure. between kind of like a bar venue versus like live from, you know, McSudsey's Irish pub, <laughs> you know, like just straight up bars that like every Friday we bring in a musician. Right, 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 right. Um, Welcome to Pigskins tonight. No, I haven't. I like not in the bigger cities. Uh, I think uh, when you are privileged to tour our great country that has um, mostly rural areas, that is usually where you do end up playing. And, mm -hmm. you know, some of the uh, saddest gigs of my life have been in, and some of the nicest gigs of my life have been in kind of little uh, towns like that, where it's just, and, and it is interesting, where it is the setup of like, go to this bar to watch live music and yeah. there's no like it could yeah, just because well, be it's all it's often just it's background <laughs> it's right because i think there's a reason why a lot of these bands do covers because it's one of those things similarly i have this this relationship with comedy where it's like well i know what this show is intended to be no one's here to listen to me play something off my new album they want to hear today is gonna be the day that oh I'm my god oh my god james Literally, that is the first, that is number one. Yeah. That is number one. Okay, but <laughs> here's the thing, though, yep. is that, like I uh, was briefly telling you in the pre show, this uh, I've, I've formed a list of these tunes, and yep. a lot of them I have, like, a, a personal relationship to. You nice. know, you have to kind of go with what you know. The first one is Wonderwall, because yes. when I was attending my... Uh, when I was going to like hippie school out in the country, uh, one of my friends that I met there, he, you know, taught me how to play guitar. And this was the song that we would like sing and yeah. play together. Over yeah. And this over is the and quintessential over over bar band song, right? Not at the beginning. It, it's, it's because it's favorable to people. It, the thing that I've recognized from bar bands is they want to take you on a, <laughs> a journey where you're able to reminisce about your younger years. Yeah, absolutely. And and kind of and then going from there, uh there was also this um his like stepdad had and actually both of the people I know who have uh cover bands are both um stepdads in some way. So I do think that that is Now that bad. would be a great name for a cover <laughs> band, stepdads. The stepdad. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, uh, it's just, it's just true. And there's, okay, there's three songs mm -hmm. where they, and they would play, um, 
they had this kind of like event space where they would like host like big parties and this band sure. would just like they were like the house band basically all of dads or and stuff what were they now what was very, what was their name what was their name Can i we reveal it I don't remember what it was. Can we, can we like just invent a name? Because anytime people can't remember, I like to give it so we don't keep saying, oh, okay. we're to well, my the, friends. Yeah. The guy's we name just call was, them stepdads. Can we just call them stepdads? The guy's name was it had to it has to be Kenny in the stepdads because the guy's oh, what was his was, last name? Kenny what? This is a classic. Kenny, well, I don't want to reveal his last name on here. Can, we, can also you give me a remember. similar? Now we're just going down a spiral. <laughs> can you come up with a similar name to his real last name? Uh Kenny Ramirez. Yeah, Kenny Ramirez and the stepdads. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see them now. Yeah. Don't forget no. to give, let's give it up for our bar staff. And, and they would also have like lyric books on the stage as well. So oh. that if people wanted to come and sing their favorite song with the band, they could. I I, I do like that as a small yeah. town bar band. I can I can see Kenny Ramirez. I I, I imagine him <laughs> engaging with the audience while the bassist is like, yeah it's uh don't don't uh don't alter the first draft that popped into your mind i love it okay so so kenny ramirez and the stepdads there's three songs so there's three songs that they played more but these are the three that i i like learned them through this band basically Mm -hmm. so there's uh keep your hands to yourself by the georgia satellites my honey my baby and, don't yeah. put my love upon no shelf he <laughs> said don't have me no, no lies. lies and keep your hands to yourself man, yeah. Man, man, man. <laughs> yeah oh man <laughs> I, I, I love this band i am already into kenny ramirez and the step <laughs> and then uh the other two that we have here of course um uh gloria the them uh, with Van yeah, Morrison. Of course. Um, and of course the piece de resistance um eight six seven five three oh nine. Oh was, Jenny Jenny, who yeah. can I turn to? Yeah, yeah. About wow, that. this sounds awesome. Yeah, it's they were they were pretty good. It it I think the thing that gets to be a little bit, you know, grading is that when it's pure pure like stepdads and dads playing dad rock and you you know go to a couple of their parties and you realize like okay they're not mixing up the set at all and they're mm. it's just kind of like staying the same and like why these songs in particular it, it can get a little like well it's because okay. they're it's because they're taking the old timers <laughs> on a trip back to when they were in the car like you mentioned yeah yeah. And then the, and the, the, the Georgia satellite comes on. I got a little change in my pocket going jing a ling a ling. I want to listen to that song so bad. But so bad. Is, the thing that's funny is that I can't hear those and think of them as actual songs. Like I don't associate with well, yeah, they, but they become, they yeah. take you back. And that's how I feel about Wonderwall <laughs> and a couple other ones. I don't want to spoil your list though, because there's a couple, as I was prepping for the show tonight, I thought there's going to be some type of crossover, yeah. but. I don't yeah. suspect much. There's only a couple that are really, really clear in my brain. Sure. Uh, and then, so like I said, that brings me to um, kind of like my other friends of Stepdad <laughs> um, and uh, his cover band. Oh God, what are they? They're called, the, well, it's Johnny and it's Johnny and the um, and the something as well. Um, but I can't, I can't remember. It's the other stepdad band. When I first, uh, I, I think, I think we got to call him Johnny in the pool cues. That sounds great. They yeah. do have a pool table in the basement of their, uh, home. I love it. <laughs> this is also the same man who I watched, uh, famously. We, um, we, we spent some time with, uh, at their, uh, they have this very nice, like, sort of, like, cabiny thing out in this uh, town of Edgewater in BC, and so we got to spend a lot of time there, and it was really nice, and, you know, hang with Johnny and his boys, and uh, I, I Oh, I think this- that should be the name, Johnny and the boys. <laughs> Johnny That's, and, yeah. Yeah, Johnny and the boys. <laughs> and then um, he, uh, and when I first met him, he was on his front porch drinking a pint of rum and coke listening to a recording that they had done of them covering um, I shot the sheriff and (laughs) now again it's it's a little alarming to hear like you know all 
uh, like men to like 50 plus like all white dudes singing i shot the sheriff there's sure. a little bit of a disconnect there i mean they did do a really good job but it is now, do, they have, like, do they have do they have beer bellies yes and red faces <laughs> i think that makes it okay once if they have beer bellies and red faces because you go well i guess i understand well we're on rocky shoals yeah <laughs> just um and then so that was like their kind of big one i know that they had quite a uh a repertoire as it were one of the members also uh had a practiced stand with like an ipad attached as well so mm-hmm. that he was it was very sophisticated um and then just some ones that i wanted to like pepper in there for good yep. measure we can't leave them out obviously Freebird is one Damn. i'm gonna tell you this i've never heard that in a bar and that is a real commitment from the band to do unless they're doing an abbreviated version all of Freebird. i guess that's true i guess i've never heard it before either it is quite the undertaking uh, i think pepper. i've heard tuesday's gone which is also a long song right yeah, I mean, people just, uh, again, it, I, well, and, and later on, I'll reveal a song that I covered this past New Year's, which does have a lot of, uh, takes a lot of commitment, and that will, okay. all will we're, be revealed. We're going to continue um, on from Freebird. Freebird, and then, of course, like, Stairway to Heaven, but there's this kind of, like, this intersection of, like, dudes who play guitar and want to impress girls at parties or just like learning a song over and over because they like it um and sort of like my peers or whatever uh, with like you know the kind of bar band genre so again Mm -hmm. like stairway to heaven seems like another one that would be like pretty ambitious but definitely maybe not of like maybe that's a goal somehow i think bar songs have to be short i don't think you can pull out because once Stairway to Heaven comes on, <laughs> you're just kind of like, oh, we're going to we're going to suffer yeah. through this whole thing. Well, and then well, and then on top of that, I have Life is a Highway, Tom Cochran. And I think especially for Damn, us, I too, do. Like, I do love that song. That's a very <laughs> Canadian song. Well, exactly. And so I think that this is this brings us to another thing of like how specific like can con bar oh. con like meets like you know i'm sure it's not on the list but like the guest who i can imagine would be oh my like, god well yeah no sugar tea. tonight in my coffee no sugar tonight in my yeah, tea, tea. Right do yeah. da, 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 do da. <laughs> now in 2020 uh myself and jason grimmer who you know we did a week-long yeah. episode revealing what we believe to be the 25 greatest canadian songs of all time we had a limit i think it went up to 1985 and before we didn't go 85 and on maybe we have to we have to bring this one back and do a revamp of that list yeah i uh i would like to see that list because okay. the other thing that's like interesting okay this is kind of taking in like, we also have like a plethora of like nirvana and then also mm-hmm. like famously like the nirvana cover songs from the unplugged the like sure. the man who sold the world yep. where did you sleep last night yep. i think there's something very appealing to like young men of just like whoa this like cool guy took this like song that was old and like yeah. made it cool again maybe mm-hmm. i could make nirvana cool again <laughs> now i want now now it seems like a lot of the the bar bands yeah. are often fronted or at least populated by mostly uh, the fellas that's I'm wondering, I, yeah. have you ever seen a bar band with a female lead singer? Because as we were talking <laughs> about this, I was trying to think to myself, what would a cover song be by a female singer? And I think it's got to be Black Velvet by Alana Miles. Oh, I love that song. I now love that, Alana Miles. That's, that's, that's a bit of a sexy song. <laughs> yes, and good. She should be. She's got great hair. Her ass looks great in those jeans, and she dated Robert stuck. Plant, who was the uh, no, aforementioned oh yeah, my she God. Did, oh of, my of Led God. Zeppelin. Wow, can't believe it! But yeah. uh yeah, that is a good point. Also, also Proud Mary as well. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because then it's kind of got like the credence tie-in as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then kind of going forward. So that's kind of like all the ones that I have on my list. And right now I have two more as just kind of like a talking point of like future, like overplayed bar band songs. Interesting. One that I think has almost 
already gone to that point. And again, these are people, these are a lot of like, these are people, I have seen these songs covered by like, you know, bands that I gig with. Mm-hmm. So number one is Dreams, Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, it's because know. of the uh, the skateboard guy with the cranberry drink. With the cranberry what drink. Name? Dog Man? Dog Face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do- I think I think it was Dog Man, yeah. Dog Man look, and I'm Dreams. Sa- I, I have zero issue with this guy, but I knew, I knew. I once again said to our friend Jason Grimmer, this is going to make people, and there's nothing wrong with discovering music. A lot of people got into stuff because of uh, Stranger Things and things like that. But I thought yeah. this cranberry drink guy is going to, he's about to make Fleetwood Mac a lot of money. Oh, yeah. And Fleetwood Mac, they're a very business savvy band, I yeah. feel like, in a lot of ways. Once they got the cocaine under control, they could really yeah. get their business in order. Yeah, bless them. Um, for it. So that's I, it. That's on your future overplayed list. Yeah. And then my other one, and I hate to say it because, you know, it's uh, funny you should mention Stranger Things, but it is, in fact, Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush. Yeah. No, I never liked that song to begin with. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't like Kate Bush. I don't like Kate Bush. Oh, too, too, too much of a weird, it's a, too much theatrics for me. What the fuck trap have you laid for me where I'm just come on your show and you get told me that Kate Bush fucking sucks? I How never, I never, I never, said, I never, I never said Kate Bush effing S's. I said, not for me, too whimsical. And Marlena, hold on. You've been shredding all, you've been shredding your friend's stepdad's band. Here. They're doing eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. They're doing all these classics. You're over here just piling on. And I say one thing about uh, Kate I have been Bush. nothing. I have been nothing but respectful to Kenny and Johnny. I love those guys. I, 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 I like Kenny Ramirez. And what was it? Kenny Ramirez and the what? The cigarette machine? <laughs> what? No, the stepdads. Oh, the stepdads <laughs> and Johnny and the boys. All, I never said the Kate Bush F and S's. All I right, just said right, not right. for me. I'm sorry. I came on strong. I apologize. Well, I accept your but... apology. Oh, thank you for <laughs> thank you for accepting my apology. I yeah. really appreciate it. I'm trying to work on myself in this new year. Are you and I both. 2023. Trying to yeah. get better. Anyway, I think um <laughs> Marlena, your mic is very hot right now. We're picking up a lot of noises on your end. That's really, really disgusting disgusting and as a woman i, I agree i agree <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> i was afraid this was gonna happen i just want to say i hate it so much this is horrible and it's just gonna keep going marlena you gotta turn the game down on your mic <laughs> This is extremely immature. I'm being ganged up on and being bullied. Women are being bullied on this show. I don't appreciate it. Um, there we go. That means accurate. Oh, okay, good. I was right. Um, but yeah, basically, I think that because of the, um, I mean, it's it, it's very meaningful when you just discover Kate Bush for the first time because you're being presented with like, oh, this is like cool 80s pop music yeah. that is like weird and different and like really beautiful and this woman is so like strange and so cool yeah yeah it's and like then, you're watching if a mary poppins had a band well i disagree but <laughs> we're just gonna leave it there yeah. i'm working on <laughs> being more patient with others mm-hmm. but yeah and and so but what i do think that is going to lead to is just like um a lot of people and i think it's already happening of like trying to cover uh kate bush which is already like very ambitious there is that it is yeah really... we can agree that is ambitious yeah. and and i when i was like uh like a teen folk singer i covered running up that hill i did like you know a, like folksy kind of version of that and that was all fine and good if looking back now I probably would tell myself not to do that um I was also just uh I was a backup singer for one of my friend's bands and she wanted to cover this song um but one thing that kept driving me crazy is that the phrasing is very specific in that tune Mm -hmm. too which also makes it very difficult to cover and she kept getting the phrasing wrong and it like made me want to rip my hair out but anyways, so maybe maybe this is almost a psa yeah. that that you can use your experience to let people know kate bush it's ambitious maybe you can tell them to pivot to just uh covering songs from the band bush 
Yes, cover bush. <laughs> um, and I'll reveal what song I chose to cover for New Year's. Of oh, this. yes. I played a New Year's show, got to ring in the New Year. And um, I always wanted to cover this song. It's been my dream to cover it. Um ever since I was a little a little girl mm -hmm. and that song is We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel. A very very <laughs> difficult song to sing. Yes, and James, if I may, please. I'm, I'm trying to work on myself, I'm trying to be kinder to myself in this new year. I fucking nailed every single word. If anyone tells me at any point to recite all the lyrics to We Didn't Start the Fire, I like can do it like it actually this is something we <laughs> this is there we go oh our children's <laughs> choir appreciates it now oh. at one point i used to also be able to do all of we didn't start the fire wow. no longer okay. well yeah i i have stepped up and have Great. joined the ranks so i yeah i'm just feeling really good about that and that's kind of and so that's one where I would love to see more people try to cover that and do well, it. So really what about this, Marlena? How about you pick up on where I left off? Joe McCartney, Richard Nixon, Studebaker, television. North Korea, South Korea, Marilyn Monroe. Joe McCartney. <laughs> I think you maybe missed a couple of things in there. Isn't there like a... And then it goes... Dee, 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 yeah. And then it goes Eisenhower... Uh, James uh, Dean... Eisenhower vaccine, England's oh. got a new queen, Marciano, Liberace, Satayana, goodbye. Yeah. And then it starts with, and then afterward, Joseph Stalin, Malenkov, Nasser and Prokofiev, uh, Rockefeller, Campanella, Communist Bloc, Roy Khan, Juan Perón, Tuscanini, Dacron, Bien Bien Boot Balls, Rock Around the Clock, yeah. Einstein, James Dean, Brooklyn's got a winning team, Davy Crockett, Peter Pan, Elvis Presley, Disneyland, Bardo, Budapest, Alabama, Cruise Chef, Princess Grace, Peyton Place, Trouble in the Suez. Me, 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 me. Elena, the kids love you tonight. <laughs> I That's love right. We have a live studio audience <laughs> of children. You just can't see them. Kids love Billy Joel. They love rides. Yeah, kids do. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that uh, my kids, I'm a father to many. They love the footage of him freaking out in his live performances. You know what? I never fall, as long as no one's like physically assaulting anyone. Um, like um uh what's his face from the eagles uh don I'm henley just, don yeah, felder that, that, Glenn that, fry don henley randy yes, meisner you want to talk about dad rock <laughs> i mean that's yeah that's another big one too what would be like the most like is it just hotel california that the dad i think they have a cover? lot i feel like they have a lot of bar songs be hotel california take it easy, take it easy. i think um life in the fast lane oh yeah yeah uh my favorite Eagles song is Take It to the Limit. That song. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, you know, if I could do anything leading up to this live at home, it would be to close out that show with me performing that live on stage. But I can't because I'm Why not, not? A singer. not a singer. I'll, I'll train you. It'd be like we could do like for your live show, we could do like a mini documentary as a segment that's about Whoa, me training. Getting you ready for me to perform. Uh, yeah, yeah. Take it to the limit one you're more you're halfway there <laughs> i'm halfway there oh my god well marlena look i want to thank you so much for being here and just don't be embarrassed about the flatulence i didn't that was the sound effect i'm like well, not then, here's participating the thing. If, it, in this. if it was i'm gonna to talk to dimitri about that because he's he's shaking his head saying no sound effect i don't know i i believe you this is extremely triggering. I feel like I'm being ganged up by a bunch of boys who are trying to make it seem like I was farting, but I wasn't. I, I'm going to tell you something, Marlena. I, I don't fart think, and I hate that. I don't I think it. anyone thinks you're farting. <laughs> they better not. They really better not. This would be not. perfect timing if you accidentally <laughs> did fart right now. I would never do that. I am never, I would never, ever do that. I feel like you've got the name of your next album, Marlena Moore, Never Farting. I don't care for that word. I don't care for that word you're saying. I think that is disgusting. I do not care for toilet humor in any way. It's horrifying. I like humor about 
having sex. <laughs> oh yeah, we're keeping it clean. Yeah, just a, a right above the turlet. Yeah. Well, uh, Marlena, look, thanks so much for being here. And I will say this: I'd love to see you cover all of those songs at a bar. I'll I'll do it for lots of money from Charles. Great, Charles will do it. Now we really know what uh, Friday Fest is going to be. Marlena, thanks so much for being here. Okay. Hey, thanks. The pleasure is all mine. <laughs> Fuck this show. Fuck this show. Fuck everything. Fuck this show. I'm never coming back. <laughs> this is actually so mean. This is so mean. This is so funny. I really hope you're all happy. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not happy. <laughs> wow that was an incredible sound effect <laughs>
I'm not going to use the word anymore, I'm afraid. And I'm getting accused of showering with pants on. One of those and, things and is and true. Furthermore, Charles is getting accused of being rich accused. by me. Yeah, you're right. Accused is unfair. He is rich. Confirmed. Two of those things are true. And Marlena knows and you know. So I'll let you guys duke it out. Uh, Euro Corner. What's that? Well, during the show, we have somebody who's making fresh Euro in the corner. Oh, I, I do like that. I'm going to put a check mark next to that one. Okay. Dave's Pit of Despair. Go on. Dave Kaufman just kind of wallows. Uh, and, uh, well, he reads so it's, a, it's a normal night for Dave, then. I'm going to put a check mark next to that. Yep. That resonates with me. And then the last one we have here is Erotic Mess. Oh. Yeah. What does that mean, an erotic mess? I think you've had a lot of uh, uh, real nasty customers on the show throughout the year, and it would be yeah, a... there There's been many, many adult-themed guests on this show. Like, a lot. And I was thinking that we'd just take them all and put them in one point in the theater while the show's happening. And it all kind of right. writhes around in some kind of uh, sexual erotic rat king uh, skin on skin and yeah. Kind can of I can I not can I not be part of this as you put it? Sexually erotic rat king. You don't have to okay any of these ideas. I don't pay these children scientists comedians behind me. Here's here's the deal. There's a lot of ideas. There's too many ideas because here's the thing. I've got uh, you're right. fifty of them that I that I didn't take. These is this is the cream of the crop. And this is in addition to what we idea generated earlier this evening. And they did this all in. 45 minutes. Dimitri, look, I don't know if we can fit all of this into one show. Buddy, I'm feeling... Right. I'm feeling like, I don't know. Like, we need something. Like we need something big. What do you mean? I mean that when we set out to do a live show, we made a promise, and now yeah. I feel like that mountain is too high a climb. Yeah. That that tower's too high a build. That that and there's not enough space in the tower for all the ideas. We can't fit everything in one tower. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I know what you're thinking. I want you to tell me what you think I'm thinking. I think you want to take a swing. I think you want to... You want to, I think you want to take this idea, you want to blow it up. I do want to take a swing and I don't want to hit a base hit. I don't even want to hit a home run. I want a grand slam. I don't even want one baseball game. I want a double header. Say it. Say it in front of all I these unpaid scientists. I don't know if I can back myself into this corner tonight. I don't care because you know what? We've been doing this show for three years and we have nothing to show for it. You're right. We have nothing to show for it. Nothing. I'm gonna take these fake glasses off. I'm gonna look you dead in the eyes. I want you to make a promise to me that these okay. three years weren't for nothing. That I didn't put in the work learning how to operate online streaming applications. You're right. That I didn't get a master's in being able to transition from, from guest to guest. That I don't have a doctorate in knowing how to mute and unmute people and learning how to potentially make fart noises for our guests and embarrassing them on the show. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Dimitri, this March, it's not going to be one show to celebrate three years. It's two shows back to back. One entire night of At Home Live. Are you with me? I don't know. What? There's a bear shit Dimitri, in the Dimitri, if you're not with me. There's a plane fly high in the clouds. Keep going. Does a dad get on stage with a gut and say, here comes Freebird? The answer is yes, yes, yes. I'll be there. Not for just one show, but for two shows. Maybe even three shows. Well, we'll hold on to that idea. You know what this means. What? Oh, oh my God! Dimitri, we've done it. This March, we celebrate three years, an entire night of comedy. We've done it again. I want you and the rest of the scientists to oh. take the night off. Take the night off? I'll let them know. I want you to go to the bar. Take Watch the a bar off. band. 
James's orders. <laughs> Dimitri, I want to thank you so much. All right. James. Yes. Hold on, I'm sitting on the counter. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. You're a good man. And you know what? So are you. You're braver than I because no one would attempt one show. Hold on. Let me get into the... I'm falling into the sink. I'm patting this one on the back. She's had a hard day. She's had a hard day. Yeah, it doesn't look like she likes it. She's had a hard day. Oh, boy. It's okay, Diane. We're doing two shows. <laughs> we're doing two shows, Diane. Look, okay. We're going to do two shows, but we're going to finish this show off tonight, Dimitri. I want to thank you so much for... Uh, Helping tonight, and uh, we'll close shop here. God bless you, James. Here, let me oper- let me move up here. Let me operate you, James. Yeah. You're a braver man than I, because I wouldn't do one show, and I would not do two. God there you have you. it. That's Dimitri Kirez. We also want to thank both Charles Montgomery and Marlena Moore for being here. The countdown to three years starts now. But before we do that, we will be back a week from tonight, every single Monday. Until then, I am James. You are you. We were here. Good night. Goodbye. Farewell. And of course, be well.